Hello everyone. I'm um, we're back again with uh, the Blockchain Factory. Um, it's again, it's a pleasure to have um, everyone uh, in the in this call. Um, I, I'm going to present briefly Miguel Teixeira because I believe that uh, Miguel will will give a little bit of his presentation as well. Um, essentially, Miguel has been in the automotive industry for for a long time. Uh, I would say, um, I, I don't want to say decades, but uh, quite some time. But he has had a, a, a terrific experience in, uh, in multiple positions in, uh, as CIO and as VP of Information Management and in, in different areas. Um, specifically in terms of Renault and in terms of the automotive distri uh, industry, uh, Miguel has uh, has led uh, trans digital transformation in, in the powertrain uh, industry, specifically in the Renault brand. And uh, this um, let's call it this webinar. It's 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 essentially a different approach to blockchain. We've uh, we have um, had in the past uh, different perspectives from uh, from blockchain, be it NFT, be it uh, circular economy. Um, Today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, traceability. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the impact of blockchain in the industry. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome Miguel and thank him for his time and for his uh, commitment to this, uh, to this webinar. Thank you, Miguel. I think you're on mute. So thank you. Oh, yes. I'm on mute. No, no, Sorry. no, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear me? It's fine, no? Yes, I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you, Roy, for the invitation to, to share our, our experience. And thank you also for uh, Porto, Porto Business School for being here and allow this, uh, this, this presentation. So uh, I would like to share with you um, uh, our automotive experience and uh, uh, a project that I have been leading. And then I, will, I can share you also some public uh, public initiatives that uh, that we have on the, on the Renault Group. So I've been working for 17 years, as we said, for on uh, uh, at Renault, starting at Renault Cassis, and then uh, outside outside of our country in France, and then to ret in the return. And then since 2019, I've been working directly on digital business and uh, for um, Euro Europe region and uh, some uh, for, and for powertrain industry from uh, from uh, several several months now so i don't know if you, if you, if uh, we can share the presentation okay thank you um so we can we can pass to the next slide please so um, what I have to, to, to present to you, it's uh, in fact a value journey and a trust by design vision from, uh, from, uh, from, Renault, from Renault Group. Uh, and then a specific use case for the uh, automotive sector. And then uh, on bonus, some, some more on public projects that we have at, at Renault side. So uh, next slide, please, because I, can, I, I don't have the control. So this this slide seems a little bit uh, trick, tricky tricky to read, but the message here is just to, to share with you that some use cases on blockchain can can be applied on, on, on the industry. I just would like to highlight, for example, the trust as a, as a priority following uh, following and uh, uh, by track and trace, for example, and also some information sharing for process optimization. These uh, are several cases that can can fit on the industry. But uh, indeed, uh, some, some of them are more relevant than others. And you can find uh, several examples that uh, blockchain can be useful for uh, the value chain and for the automotive and, and for, other, for other industries. So uh, next slide, please. So in our point of view, uh, the strategy is focus on process, process excellence end-to-end -end customer satisfaction. So this means that so all, all actions are, are actually coming from data. Data is collected at, uh, at uh, the lowest level at, from, from the shop floor. And so we, we do have a, a strong focus on, on our data strategy as a key performance, uh, a key performance for, for, for value. So um, 
for for to to have traceability uh, it's uh, it's important for us because uh, transparency and and trust are also the a consumer need uh, uh, as they have also some new behaviors um so we need to adapt our our value chain and our shop floor and our plants to uh, uh to pro to, pro to produce and to to uh, to manufacture uh, according to our uh, consumer expectations so the the full benefit for the blockchain for the blockchain is indeed an effective collaboration uh, on confidence on this data and this data cannot be tampered that's the value from uh, that uh, we think blockchain can add. So next slide, please. So to give you some contextualization and give you our vision from our digital journey, uh, as, as I said, uh, with strong focus on data, I would like just to share uh, with you this video to give you the, um, an appropriate contextualization. Please, can you turn the video? Thank you. So, Miguel, before you continue, I, I just like to, because we, we like to make this as, as much interactive as Correct. possible. Correct. And uh, there are a couple of questions that uh, that uh, come come immediately back to me in, in terms of, uh, of the video that uh, we just saw here. One is, um, I don't want to call it hyper -opt automation, but... Um, the removal of the of the human factor in in factories or in in industries and i'd like you if you could uh, expand a little bit about that and the other point that was mentioned there which which relates to to xr augmented reality and and basically uh the the fact that there can be not just training but actually quality control based on uh, on xr and and uh, ar vr uh, uh capabilities and um, have you or have you seen or have you proposed in, in any of the solutions that you've seen or, or that you've been proposing um, the integration of XR with, with blockchain to, to make sure that there's a traceability in terms of not just content, but actually um, trainee behavior, for instance? Yes, concerning augmented reality and virtual reality, we have several, several initiatives and several we can say must items to implement on shop floor and mainly uh, as you said on on predictive also uh, on co quality control 
using uh, uh, um, using AI, uh, so we can we can uh, use use video. We can use deep learning also to implement some routines or some uh, some methods to help us to decide and uh, help us to identify some non non conformities uh, concerning quality and also to identify uh, if the, if there are some piece, pieces of parts missing on on the on the process flow so this is an important issue uh, effective as you said and we uh, we have uh, indeed some initiatives concerning uh, also remote maintenance and uh, using augmented reality we are also implementing these initiatives some of them on proof of concept and others uh, are already on uh, some uh, more um, uh, mature mature level i can say but indeed uh, we use augmented reality for quality control for predicted maintenance for remote maintenance also for training uh, training is important because we can we can test for ergonomy we can test some uh, some uh, we can train some people uh, outside of the of the real real field uh, on important fields uh, as uh, if it is a, a risk if there is a risk, a security risk associated, so we can train ergonomy, we can train dexterity uh, before or using simulation before it can be used on the real field. So we can avoid uh, we can avoid the risk, we can avoid danger, we can avoid incidents using uh, augmented reality and uh, virtual reality. To answer also your uh, your question concerning uh people people on the field so one of the all of our pillars uh concerns on connected connected workforce so uh our goal is to uh, it's to connect all the people that we have on shop floor and give them give them the, the right skills so they can they can be effective uh, on the uh, on uh, and uh, um, value added on value added uh, tasks so uh, for repetitive tasks we can use all the automated automated robotics uh, uh, that uh, we can uh, can put in place, and then we can uh, people will be uh, affected uh, and assigned for more uh, added value uh, added value tasks. So uh, our goal is to give uh, give tools so that they can uh, have decentralized de decisions, and also they can access information from anywhere using any device and uh, access access data on real time so uh, yes it is uh, it is very important uh, um, these key tools these key digital breakthrough tools to be implemented on the on the field okay. on the shop floor and thank there's, you for there's asking there's a question on there's a question on um, fraudulent activity so it, it obviously we we see the the, the potential of the supply chain traceability as well as uh, the, all the benefits. But uh, somebody put, posted a question here saying that what happens if a member of the supply chain posts fraudulent activities such as substituting counterfeit products? Sorry, I, can you repeat? I didn't hear. I must put the sound a little, little bit higher on myself. So, so the, okay. um, the question the question is about uh, potential fraudulent activity posted on the blockchain. And the question mm -hmm. goes like, what happens if a member of the supply chain posts fraudulent activity, such as substituting counterfeit product to the blockchain? Well, on the blockchain, uh, information can, cannot be tampered. So we, we, there is a consensus. There is a, a kind of democratic uh, agreement between the parts that make, uh, make the nodes of the blockchain to agree that uh, that uh, information information cannot be tampered so uh, this is an important key feature from the blockchain it's the, uh, the information it's Im immutable and if it is tampered uh, all, the, all the nodes will be aware of that because uh, uh, the, the all the nodes have the same data if one node becomes uh, becomes compromised the others will be immediately notified and they 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 be uh, banished from 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 the blockchain uh, until they they give reliable information to be to be to continue as a member from the blockchain i don't think that the question is so much about the reliability of the blockchain but i believe that it's much more about transferring uh real world counterfeit into blockchain transactions so probably it's, re it's more related with the, the oracles or the ability to to determine counterfeit before inserting information on the blockchain. 
so I think that was more. Okay, uh, I can I can compliment. I hope it, it answers the question. On an end-to-end -end, uh, value chain, uh, all the parts uh, takes takes a, a responsibility. So, to, so we, if we will have some counterfeit information on the blockchain, uh, all all the members must agree on that. So uh, it kinds uh, kinds kinds uh, it cannot almost be possible that all they agree that uh, information is correct. So. Um, of course, uh, of course, it's coming from production to from the shop floor, from manufacturing until the end, till the consumer, uh, the consumer has has his product. So if uh, if all the members uh, agree that information is true, so it, I I think it's kind of difficult that uh, uh, we can temper the, the information on on the end-to-end -end blockchain network. So um, it's kind okay. of difficult. So let's move on. I'll uh, I'll keep on asking questions as they come in. So go ahead with your continue, please. Okay. So uh, as I said, uh, as we saw on the video, uh, we based uh, we base our 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 vision uh, on data. So as you can see on on on, on the bottom, uh, our strategy relies uh, a lot on on the on the exploitation of data, and we have three three main steps uh, considering considering our data strategy. So it becomes with the acquisition on the on the on the field, uh, the storage and the referential uh, as uh, as we need to to have some information in the standardized way, so we can give the the clients uh, and the correct exploitation, the correct dashboarding, and the correct information, so they can they can rely on good decisions so it based on based on this we we, we described uh, our strategy using uh, five pillars uh, as, as i said with the connected work workforce with a correct process for dot zero anticipating and pre predi predicting uh, maintenance but not 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 only because it also quality can can be used and giving data uh, uh, available uh, with real time uh, so decisions can be uh, as fast as as effective, and for that, for give transparency and trust, uh, we need a full track and trace from all the process. So, uh, and we see one of the pillars is important to us is full track and trace, on the flexible supply chain, of course, with the, with the client uh, demanding and being being more and more, uh, how can I say, more and more uh, demanding of of. Of customization, so we need to have a, um, a shop floor and a process that can can produce uh, uh, with with unitary traceability with with a, a lot of diversity. So one car is different from the, the next car. It's different from the next car because the clients and cons consumer are, are almost demanding highly customization. We can we need to adapt our value chain to to answer. To answer this, uh, that so we can, we need to adapt our industrial industrial process to to, to answer that. So please uh, move to the next slide. Uh, of course, that's that's what we we are being talking about is trust by design. So we need to implement systems uh, that be can be reliable uh, and trust from the beginning. So uh, if we can, we can go deep now uh, with, with this background in this context, uh, we can go deep, deep diving uh, one initiative, uh, traceability for industrial environments and based on an high temper proof system and enabled already by blockchain. This is uh, uh, one uh, initiative and proof of concept that we are implementing a study uh, together with the University of Aveiro that we are implementing on uh, our uh, shop floor next slide please so as said so we have the value chain from inbound logistics to service and uh, now as a global context as we said consumers have new behaviors uh, uh, they demand uh, they demand trust they demand uh, more transparency and today we have uh, or no no uh, no access to information or slow access to information and uh, we have non quality low efficiency long lead times and we need to to uh, give some response to that also in implementing uh, 
to connect complex to connect complex systems uh, and assure a good connectivity between third party systems and our partners and our 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 providers and, and suppliers today we have multiple systems and multiple databases so uh, and multiple entities and stakeholders and blockchain can give us some some visibility on the on, on this uh, so we need a suitable architecture we need to deal with um, common problems with security and privacy for all of the entities that take part on, on this and also that the information need to be efficient and reliable next slide please so in our scenario where we we, we 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 thought we could we could implement it is the pluggable scalable trust model uh, and for that as you can see on on the left we are representing business units and uh, we can have several business units uh, on on each plant and we can multiply this for several plants uh, on our perimeter and they can be all connected from business units to plants uh, to a common a common uh, HMI so we can have visualization of the, this information coming from shop floor from several plants and also from another entities or another another departments or another uh, another units so we think about that this can need to be pluggable modular thinking about of course the big picture and all the value chain and open for future models future add-ins and future developments so next slide please so what you can see you see it's a high level conceptual schema i'm not going uh, going into deep technical technical analysis it's not the goal today uh, but we can see that on the on the on the lower lower level we have the intelligence data acquisition coming from EOT coming from the field at the middle we have the core trust network that is uh, our blockchain and interfaced with the visualization for for clients interfacing uh, at the right side with enterprise systems coming from from our group but also for uh, for other, other third parties and on the left we have the control co cockpit to control all the network so uh, a synthesis a modular architecture implementing security by design that needs to be responsive that be, needs to have intelligence on the edge and can be transversal and we need to be co uh, implement compatibility with existing systems always respecting business rules and uh, the data size limitations sorry it's a it's a lot of a lot of noise here because it's uh, it's raining <laughs> um so how can we address that so at the middle we have the core trust network as we said based on blockchain so we will have immutable and securely kept the data uh, we have high throughput for for data access on our databases and we need to assure that uh, we have lightweight and modular framework we need to address security privacy and efficiency and latency and uh, three uh, three uh, key concepts uh, are included on our on our vision we deal with encryption and today we are using high entropy sources like quantum to to generate for example random random numbers to to assure to assure the correct in encryption and using uh, reliable sources hashing to keep the blockchain light and fast that this means that traceability information will not will not be kept on the core blockchain as we saw you know, only the hashing of this information will be kept the traceability will be kept on the enter enterprise enterprise uh, databases and the hashing uh, we will is it's to be checked between the blockchain and the enterprise systems it assure, assures that the blockchain can uh, is not uh, does not demand a high volume as normally we use used to associate with blockchain databases we only keep the ashes and this this is not reverse engineeringable if i can say like that and for privacy we will implement mpc multi multi multi-party computation to assure that no one knows uh, which information we are we want to ac access and where to where the information will be uh, read and this is an important concept because we assure that on our communication channel there is uh, uh, an anonymous it's anonymous the information will be anonymous and we will rely on this to assure privacy so no more technical concepts we we can uh, we 
we can see uh, so that our initiative can be seen as a as a private a private blockchain because we need to have some high sc scalability and uh, we uh, we recognize that our solution um it's uh, it's to be accessed by uh, we need to approve who can can see the information so if a client wants to access our our databases uh, for to, to to see where the product is is produced what what are the parts that are included and so on so on so on uh, once they can they can rely on our dealers and uh, demand access to to the is product and then we authorize this so we can say it is a permissionless private uh, uh, blockchain uh, to be implemented in this initiative. Uh, don't hesitate to ask questions if you if you need it. So for our user layer, we, we will have uh, some public information that we will be readable for everybody and some private information for entities and departments that, re that are important to the manufacturing phase. That could be uh, manufacturing departments, uh maintenance departments that could be uh, marketing logistics departments and coming for uh, the entities taking part on the value chain not only renault but also the our suppliers so we we give we give here uh, out different authorizations concerning the who, who is the, the the reader in fact and and uh, not re-entering deep on technic on technical analysis uh, as you know you you are studying blockchain so there is the concept the, the concept of mining so uh, and for us there is no competition for, for mining there is no interest to compete for for who is mining the information who is implementing the transaction on the blockchain for us the important is the transaction could be it needs to be immutable and it could be readable for the people involved on the blockchain. So we implemented an, a variation of proof of authority for consensus algorithm. So this means that uh, one node will mine the transaction and the other node, the next, will mine and then the next and the next and so on. So every node will mine a transaction with no competition between us, between them. So this is how we implement and we sure that every, every node will implement and mine a transaction onto the blockchain without competition. Just to show where we are implementing this initiative. So we, we, we decided that we will be implemented on, the, um, on this scenario because it, it's complex, it's diverse, and uh, every, every parameters are involved. You can see uh, an assembly line that is uh, automatic, the other is semi-automatic. And we are using assembling areas and machining areas, as you as you can see. So, if you, all the complexity we we'll see here and we, we will be uh, evaluated here, so we think that uh, we will not find uh, uh, further complexity besides that we are implementing here. And it is at the shop floor level, of course, and but uh, the. The goal is to be modular and to extend to other entities, to other plants, and to other to stakeholders. Just some examples and initial mockups uh, of our solution. No, uh, no technical information. You can see the payload. That is information that is, that is for for the traceability, and we will have uh, a timestamp and the, the ashes that will be kept on the blockchain and the information that can be queried on on, on this uh, on this solution. And for our cockpit, as, as we said, we implemented, a, 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 it's our goal to, to, to finalize a digital pin, a, mix, a mixing reality time, real time information from the field with digital twins uh, um, from the software solution. So the goal is, is to have a, a kind of a control tower, a kind of control room, so we can see what's happening on the field in real time with some uh, lights, uh, with the visual management, and with some interactive interact, interactivity that we can uh, deal with our, our sensors to switch on, switch off, and so on. And the importance to, to see what is happening uh, considering the, 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 pro the product and also the process. So just the credits, it's, it's, a, it's a team a teamwork. So uh, I'm working on that and also some colleagues from the University of Aveiro and our supervisors. 
and uh, just to give the, the correct credit for this solution. And for this solution at all, if you have some questions before we move on to another public project on Hono Group, be my, be my pleasure. I'm here to answer yeah, and to I, help you. At least I have uh, one question, which is, uh, it seems that this is um, a, um, a partnership or a relationship with the University of Aveiro. And to a certain extent, um, there's somewhat um, um, intellectual property uh, generated here. So how did you manage the intellectual property and how would you, how would you advise uh, a company on managing intellectual property in terms of, uh, of blockchain? I, I, advi of blockchain I advise a, a company considering a, a project that will be done with a partnership with an with a academic, academic, uh, academic entity like the uh, University of Aveiro. And normally uh, it's something it is done on partnership, uh, also considering a PhD work, if, if that is the case. I, I advise the companies that uh, sign the NDA uh, before before starting the project, if, it, if that is the if that is an issue for the company. So uh, and for now, uh, for now that is a, the, it is the, the important the important kickoff that can be done before starting the job. So uh, you will implement some innovation, you will implement some solutions, you will propose some architectures and we will develop some solutions. So it's important, uh, as Rui said, that you sign a, an agreement between all the partners uh, that are associated with that. And then it, once it's clear for everybody, uh, we, you can go and you can also, if it is uh, on NDA, you rely on the, this is property from Renault Group, this is property from the, the, private, the private company that takes part. So we can go on and, uh, and, and Take, take care of a patent if it is uh, if it is needed otherwise it will be it will be uh, it will realize uh, it will remain for, uh, on on the entity you are learning so it will re remain on from university that will be working with but it can be an NDA a non-disclosure agreement can be signed at at, uh, at the beginning level okay No more questions? Okay, so uh, I would like to share more on public projects on Renault Group. Uh, this is one is very interesting. It is uh, it has some 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 prizes already, some presentations already on the on the, the media uh, and on the news. Also uh, mentioned on the Forbes uh, 50 for, for blockchain projects, and uh, it's lead from uh, a colleague of mine on on France. And uh, it, it is okay to share with you some information about this. And it concerns, in fact, some uh, um, a blockchain solution to certificate vehicle compliance uh, with all the, the, the partners that take part of uh, a vehicle assembling. So uh, many entities take part on this. So it's for no, it's, that could be for Asia, that is a, that is a partner. It could be Simols, it is a Portuguese company that also takes part on this exit project. And uh, it can answer uh, also for the demand, the client demand for transparency now, and also to, to respect compliance in uh, asking for the government. This is based on Hyperledger Fabric, an open source blockchain protocol. And it is uh, also with, uh, with implementation with IBM. So if we can, uh, I also have a video to share with you. It's more, it's more, it's easier to explain with a, with a small video. So if you can turn, turn, turn on, please, the video. We supply more than 500,000 parts a day. We deliver 15,000 door panels a day. It's not enough just to do things good. It's not enough that we deliver at a competitive price. We need to do that, but also we need to be faster. We need to be more flexible. We need to be more efficient in what we are doing. Cars are more and more complex, and the supply chain is getting longer and longer. We are a company in many countries and many continents. The regulations in each area are different. And in addition, each car manufacturer has his own demands. Non-compliancy is not an option. We have to be compliant. And uh, it is critical that uh, we are avoiding potential recalls, because on, on the end, this will damage customer and supplier reputation. If we want to evolve 
and want to be faster and more successful, collaboration need to uh, be done to accelerate the whole process. That's what Exceed is giving you. Exceed is the first big blockchain project in the automotive industry. This project has the ambition to create a compliance and conformity traceability platform for the entire ecosystem based on IBM and blockchain technology. With Exceed, we can improve our quality, reduce our costs, our waste, and that we can anticipate the problems. It's uh, bringing together all the good of sharing information without the bad. You have the ability to share data with the right uh, partners. It's still uh, secure uh, and you're not sharing with uh, people who are not in your channel. And this is really an enormous advantage. IBM is a technological partner since the beginning. And with Exceed, we have transformed the customer-supplier relationship into partnership. Exceed will enable greater transparency and trust within the ecosystem, but its trust and confidence will be also given to our customers. We are proud to join Exceed because Exceed is proposing this end-to-end -end control of the value chain and to identify the risks that we may have in the, around the non-compliancy. Exceed is a real opportunity for the European automotive industry, for Renault to confirm its innovation skills, and for me to have the pleasure of coordinating this exciting project. Okay, Miguel. I think this is uh, an excellent initiative uh, in uh, total collaboration with uh, with the partners. So um, it's a uh, it's a uh, very well very well implemented uh, and uh, a very an excellent collaboration between the, all the parts and the, all the stakeholders. It is um, so we are actually searching uh, for tier one, tier two that uh, can also be joining us on this uh, transparent and trust uh, network, if you can say like that. So I think this one is very, very well succeed in, in fact, and is implemented, it is all, all already running. Do you, so, um, go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 I was moving to the next opportunity. So uh, we can we can stop here if you have uh, some questions, of course. Yeah, I have uh, I have a question that relates to, to this, uh, this ecosystem or to this uh, alliance, because these are typically uh, blockchain alliances where in this case is automotive uh, alliance. So, where do you do you see any um, competing alliances in the automotive uh, industry where some players will uh, will not align with others, uh, or like there in there are in other uh, let's call it other sectors or other industries where there are competing alliances, or do you think do you think that the automotive industry is very integrative and uh, and that uh, exceed in this case will be will be a standard de facto. So uh, this is this is a tough question, and I'm not related direct directly with the project. This is a private uh, private initiative with with a company with an automotive company, and uh, dealing with directly with their partners. Of course, some automotive uh, manufacturer could have. Mm, could have the same partners, so it could have, could have another partners, and it is possible that uh, that can we can have some parallel parallel initiatives uh, uh, based on an, another consortiums. Of course, this is uh, this is a tough question to answer. If it, this can be a standard, it depends on the success that uh, uh, that can be reached if uh, if there is some convergence uh, on on all the partners. Uh, it's a uh, but uh, indeed, uh, it could it could be possible that another similar initiatives. But uh, as said, my my colleague Odile, this is the first initiative uh, sim similar to that. This is a really pioneer. So we hope uh, um, we hope that it can can be uh, all over the their implementation to prove their success, and more people can more people and more stakeholders can can join this uh, this initiative. Right. 
So we'll move just to, to just uh, um, this, uh, to uh, we can move for the next. Yes, of course. So uh, just to share another another implementation of blockchain that could be could be implemented, and we we uh, we uh, have this already implemented in our in our in our group uh, and it is also, it's taking into into consideration the, the importance of the having fake news on the media so we implemented with uh, with trust uh, a solution based on blockchain to certify that our press communications and other another important important documents could be certified using the adoption of a with topics blockchain certification so, uh, for example, we have a, a press release from May 16. Renault Group signs agreement to sell Renault Russia and its controlling interest in Aftavaz. As, as everybody knows, Renault had, had two plants on, on on Russia and have to to, um, to 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 keep out from Russia uh, with a major impact of, of, on us because it is our uh, top top two uh, top two top two market. So. But this, uh, this is an example, this is just an example. And uh, this information, uh, if you receive the press release, we can go on the WIS Trust site and we can check if the information is reliable, it's true, and it is not fake news. I also have some video, a video that explains the concept. If you can turn the video, please. Companies and media are facing a new challenge. How to preserve the trust in information in the era of corporate news hacking, financial hoaxes and fake news, identity spoofing, and news publishing robots. As proven by the latest news, these issues have an acute impact on listed companies and the financial services industry. WizTopic has created WizTrust to offer a simple and effective solution to these challenges. WizTrust relies on blockchain technology to help companies certify the content they distribute. With WizTrust, communication teams certify their corporate and financial content, like press releases, by creating a digital fingerprint in the blockchain. Then they distribute their content to the media, investors or financial analysts via email, social media, or on the web. Recipients can then verify on WizTrust the authenticity of the source and the integrity of the content. Three simple steps in only a few seconds. WizTrust is also a trust mark supported by its corporate users and those of WizTopic. Banks, insurance companies, asset management firms, and listed companies already use WizTrust. Certification through the blockchain is the most reliable way for companies and media to prevent the publication of corporate fake news. Wiz Trust, trusted content. So, this is not publicity. It's just uh, the the solution we implemented with Wiz Trust. Yeah, and this uh, is a great. Sorry, go go. This is a great concept uh, because um, although it's not uh, publicity, it's the, the concept is good in itself because um, uh, we're being inundated by by fake news. And the, and the truth is that more and more people are just uh, trying to, to spot the difference or spot deep fakes or spot uh, what's a real uh, video than a fake video and so on. Um, what do you think will, will have to be the, the game changers? This, because obviously this, um, this product is, is useful, um, but it, has not, it seems that it has been adopted by very large multinationals that want to protect their reputation. But from the standpoint of the end user, um, this has not reached out to the end user. Do you think it's, there's going to have to be a, a game-changing um, event that will, uh, that will change the way people uh, consume uh, news and media? Or you think that in time, media producers will, will actually embed blockchain solutions into their production? So I, I do believe it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's... It's uh, communication that um, that is important to 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 assure that uh, there's some kind of evangelization between codes the, with the blockchain technology to to reach uh, P PMEs and other and other and other and other companies. Uh, so I think blockchain for now it's uh, we can reach uh, a lot of, a lot of companies, but. Uh, for sure, there there are a lot of companies also that they are not aware that 
it exists a solution to to check for the for the fake news that can uh, that, that there is solutions that can be implemented it's i believe it's a lack of information and uh, once it's maxim maxim uh, there is a maxim uh, maximization of, of of the blockchain and uh, the as well known solutions like exist this, this, this technology that companies can can adopt and implement uh, it's a kind of uh, being aware uh, it's a, it's a problem of of, um, of awareness if i can say i can say like that if i can if i can 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 use this example with the question uh, considering counterfeit so the counterfeit and this this news it's the same it's the same concept if uh, renault, renault group uh, delivers an information uh, uh, think about if this information is not true from the beginning so uh, that could be a counterfeit between codes counterfeit information so this is the same one 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 news one communication could be also a product on counterfeit so if we can uh, assure that um, since the beginning, since the, the uh, since the, the point zero of the information or, or of the product, we can uh, certify that this information is true. It's very very difficult to 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 uh, to to to, assure, to to uh, to have the information from from being being fake. This is the, the same problem for counterfeit. So uh, there's a lot of people that uh, can uh, can can jo are joining the the blockchain that uh, certifies that information that this information is reliable. This is the same thing. So Renault uh, 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 has an information delivered on the market uh, on the on the, on the medias and. Uh, the, it has digital signs so as a, as a product, and uh, it assures that the product is uh, it's it's true. Great, go ahead. No, it's uh, I can't uh, I can't I terminate my my presentation for now. So uh, I'm I'm uh, I, I I'm available for questions if you if you have. I, I'm sure for you that. Um, there's a lot of other solutions implemented on the industry sectors and uh, all of them are, have a lot of value and more to come with blockchain technology. I, I do believe that blockchain will emerge on the, on, the next, on the next years for more and more solutions on uh, other sectors and, uh, and also on the industry. It, it will be, uh, I believe, massification from uh, the use of technology as you said it is a game changer and it uh, it will adapt to the to, to the to the market it will adapt it will be it will it will reach its place on the on the on the business so i do believe that decentralized technologies democratized if i can say like that technologies with no brokers at the middle will be uh, more and more implemented and all over so I think that uh, the concept of blockchain with decentralized decisions, with decentralized, uh, decentralized um, uh, decisions, that's, that's, that's it. In fact, that's it. That's, uh, the decision, it's shared between, between uh, a lot of people. So I do believe this, uh, this is, uh, it will be the, the, the path for the future. So in terms of... Uh... What do you think uh, would be the industries? Obviously, automotive and certain industries are are just already there. But uh, automotive, obviously, finance, insurance, uh, service industries tend to be very naturally there uh, now. With NFTs, uh, everything that is art related or culturally related obviously has is is highly involved. Um, industries that you think that uh, will be, I don't want to say last, but will be uh, laggards, would you, what would you say would, as laggard industries? Do you think that there are some industries that will adopt uh, in, in not such a speedy way? Uh, it depends on the complexity. I do believe that the blockchain will reach the health, health sector. It is important. It deals with the privacy, it deals with the security information from people and uh, the fact that we can rely on blockchain it's it's important uh, and the implementation on the on the health sector it could be laggard because it can it can be deal uh, it deal with uh, with people's information with the medical information but uh, in fact i do believe uh, uh, by its complexity it could be difficult to implement they can it can uh, it can arrive uh, 
uh, after the others, but uh, it's uh, for true for true a game changer for, for them, and it is it will be a breakthrough for to deal with the information uh, from people and from uh, from us. In fact, uh, and I do believe that. Uh, Besides that, it will be implemented on, on the health sector. Yeah. Uh, there was a question that uh, involved the textile industry, the traceability on textile industry. And um, the, like the automotive industry, it's, it's um, I don't want to say very complex, but it's complex enough to, to have different uh, um, raw materials, different suppliers, different... Uh, uh, different design and and especially in the textile the design is is uh hyper accelerated in the sense that um, um every other six months there's a new design there are new fabrics there are new um there are new ways of of um of designing clothes and, and textiles uh, would you say that uh, traceability in the textile industry because of the pace of change would be so much more or much harder to implement than in an automotive uh, solution. And I'm talking about uh, industrial blockchain solutions. Okay, for textile, I think uh, you talked about you talk about uh, design. Uh, uh, and um, because it's, it's a fast mover, textile is a fast mover, but I believe the design can be can be digitally signed and it can be we can use NFTs also we can use the kind of the technology to certify that uh, our designs uh, cannot be counterfeit, cannot be tampered, or can, cannot be uh, associated with other companies. So it it will it will help to implement to implement this. Uh, uh, the textile uh, also it's a it's a global market, so it has s several entities and several stakeholders uh, uh, associated uh, as the automotive and uh, the pace for textile. I don't see that it could be um, more difficult than automotive. Um, uh, the complexity on the textile could be just a little bit more the more difficult than automotive, just because of the kind of product. But uh, with the right entities and an agreement between the entities in the centralized, democratic, democratic way and in partnership, I believe that also it could reach the textile in effective way as it can as it is implemented on on the automotive. So the two. The two dimensions that you mentioned, so the product, uh, in fact, it's it's a different product from the automotive, but it's possible with the with, with the entities taking part of our own consortium on this, and also to certify the several designs that can uh, can be digital digitally signed using a blockchain technology to assure that. Okay, uh, the the next question that I have relates more. Uh, and as we are heading towards the end of the, the webinar, uh, relates more to the future of, of the automotive industry. Obviously, everybody talks about the fact that uh, um, it will be electric, it, it will be autonomous, and that um, some uh, deep tech technologies will, uh, will change, will dramatically change the, the industry. From the perspective of the consumer, and as we are seeing lots of, uh, especially generation uh, uh, y and Z and millennials and digital natives actually not wanting to acquire uh, automo automobiles, but actually just wanting to use them. Do you see a an impact in the industry as well as how could these uh, disruptive te technologies help in uh, in changing the industry? Of course, as you said, we are we are changing. So even for the manufacturer automotive sector. Uh, we are our product is changing, so we are um, uh, evolving. So we are um, coming from a, a, a classical uh, manufacturer to a software, a software company, a tech tech company. And uh, as you said, with the connect connectivity that will will be needed on automotive uh, and uh, the autonomy and uh, the co autonomous conduction that. Uh, autonomous driving to, to be to be implemented and we rely more and more and more on data more and more and more on, on technology and uh, it's it's a, it's it's a big risk that this data could be could be tampered could be counterfeit and could could rely, could have an impact on uh, on ai could have an impact on uh, on the decisions on 
on the decisions uh, implemented in an automatic way. So I do believe also that uh, um, from this perspective, uh, the, the, the importance of the blockchain to assure that uh, on uh, autonomous driving and connectivity, it's, it's a major a major goal to reach to assure that what we are delivering on our on our cars on our services are uh, uh, reliable information so we can uh, have the, have decisions to be to be assured so blockchain for sure we will we'll have an impact on that and uh, i do believe that uh, on time to time it will more and more implemented and more and more uh, adopted uh, to be uh, to be uh, to show that uh, information is reliable. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, as as we're moving towards the end, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions that relate to the not just the course, because as you know, we invite all the speakers to to become uh, mentors of uh, of blockchain projects of the course, and obviously mm -hmm. you're you're invited, and we, it will be a pleasure to have you as a mentor on the course, but. Um, there's another question which which relates to the the difficulty that um, that in your case you you're you were probably concluding the PhD on blockchain, but the integration for students, as you know, the course at Porto Business School integrates technology, business, and legal, um, and in your case, you had to go through a massive research and massive investigation. Um, what would you say, what would be your advice for a Porto Business School student that would have a mentor and would have even the possibility to, to actually access labs and to access, um, in this case, an accelerator like Binance Labs to, to develop a project? What kind of uh, advice would you give to a student for a Porto Business School uh, degree or program? Uh, I believe that is, uh, and it is, uh, it is also an issue that I, I, I live, I live on my PhD. Eh? It's for sure that uh, the to have the, the a prototype, to have the the possibility to experiment and to test, uh, and to test scenarios. It is very important to uh, a student from a PBS to have access to a, a lab or to a to a, a scenario that he can he can test uh, all the hypotheses and to test uh, their solutions. So, um, for me, uh, considering technology, it is uh, very important to uh, touch, to touch, and have have the a feeling what it can it can be uh, the final the final product, and to assure that also the client takes part takes part on that, and uh, if he can also merge this this information merge this experimentation with a with a external company it's a, it's a, it's a wide, widely advisable that a, a student can uh, can implement in partnership with a, with a company from the industry from the automotive or other sector it is important to have a partnership between pbs the student and uh, an external company to assure that solutions are real implemented on the real field and have a, a real value for for, the, for for them yeah yeah, this, this relates back to the, um, I think that there are four to five components of this course that, that can be very helpful and, and that the mentors can help. Not just the real world sharing with the, in the example of Renault and uh, Exclusible and other, other invited guests, but also to validate a startup and even to collaborate, uh, do a collaborative learning with the students and, and very, applied based learning with with examples uh, so so for that i think it's um it's great to have a, a great team of members we have about uh, 12 faculty now between technology business and uh, and legal um so i think it's um it's it's very promising and it, it will be very promising to have you as well as a mentor to any project that students may have I'm not sure if there are any more questions. We're on the very last minute. So if anyone has another question, uh, it's this is the time to, to ask. Uh, if not, uh, we're just probably gonna uh, thank very much Miguel and for his uh, great presentation and for the, the time. Oh, there's a last question here. Uh, is it possible that the full potential of the technology could be jeopardized with the so-called decoupling of the world economy? Mm -hmm. 
it's possible it's possible uh, it's possible and we are actually we have a major impact to the of the world economy uh, impact on on the, on the technology and we, as we know we have a short a shortage uh, with uh, with the semiconductors so uh, political political and also also economics have a major impact on technology on the choice of the technologies on the orientation where uh, we are going uh, as we see on the uh, circular economy we see on the energy and uh, we see on the, the climate, uh, we need to be sustainable by design also. So it has a major impact. Uh, what are the decisions? What are the policies? What are the, the orientation and the strategy worldwide in macroeconomics have a major impact where orientate, if you can say like that, the technology. So the advancements and the, and the skills needed will be uh, oriented by the policies we need to for our world. And to complement, I think, first of all, I think this is a great question. Um, and to complement that, um, I believe that technologies or paradigms like blockchain, which is, uh, let's call it a, a web of trust and a web of, of value, uh, will actually, may actually accelerate decoupling or may actually accelerate uh, micro communities of value or micro communities of, of uh, business generation. Because as, as certain economies will want to uh, keep its uh, financial freedom or financial and economic freedom, as well as its strategic freedom, they may want to start uh, amassing resources and building and rebuilding industries locally. So, uh, but still, uh, there is still the, the necessity of, a, ne of a, a technology or a paradigm that builds trust among uh, different economies. So. Uh, I think this is this will be uh, another opportunity for blockchain. Yes. Well, indeed. and, and the dependency ahead, the dependency between between sectors and regions is also important. So I believe now uh, uh, regions are also uh, also uh, struggling to be uh, not so dependent dependent from one another. So that's why uh, some micro 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 uh, micro consortiums can 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 arise and uh, and uh, of course the, in partnership it is important to have some independence from one another of course and uh, uh, that could be uh, an impact also from the macroeconomics of course so but but yes. uh, to terminate uh, so uh, i'll be my it will be my pleasure don't hesitate to contact me if you some students or us to to be part of uh, of your uh, pbs blockchain post graduation it will be my pleasure yes we will uh we will do that and thank you again for your time and thank you for all the presence i think we've uh, we've had uh if it was not a hundred uh presence or audience it was almost there uh we will we may need to check out the the figures afterwards but uh thanks again miguel hope to see you soon and hope to to have you as a mentor for some of our students uh um projects and and uh, potential startups we're going to leave the on the on the link the 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 link of the the course but if you need any other contacts just let us know and uh, we'll get back to you thank you very much again thank you miguel okay. and see you okay next time. enjoy bye-bye thank you